Hi, this is Alper Oren. I have created a simple video to show you how to build a simple application with MVC Umbraco CMS 7 Bootstrap Team, Angular JS using Type 8 component, design patterns, entity framework with code first approach. This video is just to get you started. I'm assuming that you have already installed the Visual Studio and SQL Server and you are ready to go. We will create a multiple project solution by adding one or more projects to our existing solution. When you create a multiple project solution, the first project that you create is a startup project by default. The startup project appears in both phone in the Solution Explorer and runs when we choose debug and start from the menu bar. We can also start to debug all projects in solution simultaneously or debug one or more projects in solution by specifying the solution as a startup projects. We will use a blank solution template to create an empty solution container called Umbraco 7-MVC in our Umbraco MVC-demo folder. We then add our startup project called website and build the solution structure by adding our class library projects. Throughout this video, I will copy and paste code to speed up the process and shorten the video. So, let's get started. Let's start with creating an empty solution. Other project types, solutions, blank solution, we give it a name Umbraco 7 MVC. We then create a solution folder called web. We add a folder called source for class libraries and startup application. We then install our startup C Sharp web application based on a blank template. We create a login for empty uh, Umbraco database. I will call that Umbraco underscore SQL user. We use SQL Server authentication. I have already created this user, so I click cancel here. We then create our new database. The owner of the database will be Umbraco SQL user. We can change the part of the data and the transaction logs. However, we, we leave it as a default in the within the part column. We, we select the owner of the DB, Umrak SQL user. We refresh the database to make sure that the databases are our database is being created. We look at the mappings for Umbrak underscore SQL user to confirm the database being mapped and our user is the DB owner. Next thing to install Umbraco, use the Umbraco manager, uh, manager console. We type in install package Umbraco CMS. This will install the latest version of the Umbraco. During recording of this video, the latest version was 7.2.1. Once the Umbraco has been installed, there are several folders that are invisible within the project. So we need to make them available in the project. 
in order to do that we need to re refresh the website project then we click show all files for, from the solution explorer mini we see Umbraco, Umbraco client, app plugins, app data these are not included in the project we included the missing folders and rebuilt the solution to make sure that there are no, no errors once the project building successfully when you run the project Umbraco install page will appear and it will allow us to install our database since we installed we created the database already we choose a custom installation for our database and we provide the database details server details and user login details for the database you'll see that in configure your database section we would not uh, select any templates when we create in our Umbraco solution we got redirected to CMS now first thing we do we go and change the user login name for admin so we don't have to use the email account this will make the life be easier for us we click settings and we create a document type called home we won't worry about the matching template right now we can create a tab called main to group in to group our properties you can add a to be will add two properties one called body contents one for page title we create a template called main where home page template inherits from go ahead and select the template home or our document type let's add a static content to our home template then create a content page called home to display the static text We'll type in H1 Umbra conversion 7.21 installed. Within master page, we must include render body. This will get the layout and as the content of the home template where render body is. So this is crucial in order to execute it successfully. If you're not familiar with this render body, and please read the MVC documentation. There are lots of tutorials out there. So 
so I call this one home and populate body text and page title with some text I move the page page title property above the body text makes it easier to see I guess um, we populate the properties however uh, we're not displaying them so this will only show the static content right now so let's go and update a piece of piece of code into our home page template so that we can pull out the properties for content of the body text and the page title I will copy and paste a very simple code with some comment around it and I will let you read that We up refresh our home page as we see now we're pulling the data out from our properties. We can go and change the page title and the body text and changes should reflect on our home page. We installed the Bootstrap framework. The default Bootstrap grid system utilizes 12 columns. I suggest that you have a look at the sum of the Bootstrap grid system rules. Apply mobile first web design using media queries and determine what point the media queries should be added. I would also suggest design for the small resolution and add the media queries for the large viewports. So scale up, not down. Next thing is set up the Umbraka application event handler. I have already added a class called Umbraco Event Handler and will inherit from the Umbraco Core Application Event Handler. We will overwrite the abstract method application initialize to register our necessary configuration files. I have included Umbraco Event Handler class in our project. Overwrite in the application initialize method. I have also a class called bundle config which is responsible for registering our bundle scripts and styles. Bundle config is a reference <coughs> a static method called register bundles. I will include the bundle config in our project. If you look at the bundle collection, it's not recognized. So we need a package called system.web optimization. And we go and get that from NuGet. If you have three style sheets to include in a page, you might you might want to bundle them together in a single style sheet. So, so the browser only downloads one file instead of three. You could have a one file bundle, we could also include multiple files in a bundle. We can also specify a placeholder for version number and we can use wildcards. For example, if we upgrade jQuery from 1.9 to 2.0, we don't need to change the code. The script bundle will automatically pick up the latest version from the file system it is smart enough to distinguish between IntelliSense file, minify files and unminify files. So even though we have three versions of the 
jQuery library, the IntelliSense, the minified and the regular file, it is only going to pick up the one it needs and it won't include the jQuery more than once. In here we call the regist register bundles static method. When the application is initialized, we'll put a breakpoint to make sure that we hit that breakpoint and register our bun uh, script bundles and style bundles. Project is running. We hit the breakpoint and our static register bundle method. It's all good. I'll let you read the screen. Once we have created a bundle which includes all of the files that we require, we, re we render them in the markup using script.render or style.render. MVC will not minify the script and style in a debug mode. We could programmatically manage the bundles, bundle minification by specifying a true or false value for the bundle table to enable, min enable optimization. Let's have a look at the register bundle method. There are several scripts that have been registered. One of them is jQuery UI. As we said earlier, there's a version number in there. We'll get update automatically. This is the physical location of the files. So script that jQuery UI will be exist in that location. So as um, script for slash bootstrap.js. However, the bundle for, for slash bootstrap is a virtual part. It doesn't actually, actually exist. So as the content for slash CSS, so as bundle for slash jQuery. They are called virtual part because they are not really a file at the location, but MVC runtime is smart enough to intercept the request and route it through the bundle and minification which will be served up the files we need. I have downloaded uh, themes from Bootstrap Watch and I will I won't overwrite them in here since I already download them. There are several themes in there that are very very good but you might need to change the styles so that it doesn't look like any other bootstrap site. So there are two files at the moment that I'm gonna copy and paste into my um, website project which is our startup project content paste replace the existing file. When, you, when we install the bootstrap framework these files all um, also installed. When I downloaded, the team also came with index.html, which contains the Bootstrap um, grid layouts, basic classes. So I will take that index.html and place it in the master.css.html so that we can apply the bootstrap team into the our vanilla version of the Umbraco site that we created. So I'll remove the render body now, paste in the uh, paste the markup in here. Master.css HTML, the home CSS HTML is not included in the project we created through Umbraco. Umbraco created those files under the views folder, but it's important that we include them in the our project so we, we can get the intelligence as well. R 
let's render our bundles in our markup um, here is the virtu virtual part as I said earlier the physical bootstrap.cs part exists if you look at the content.bootstrap other virtual part is bootstrap bundles of bootstrap we need to reference the web optimization for bundle collection I have added the render by the so the content of the home page CSS HTML should appear where render body is I have updated the H2 tag if you refresh the site now hopefully we'll have the bootstrap team apply to our vanilla website and we should see the properties these are the property values we apply the bootstrap team the project retrieve couple of property values from umbraco now we have a look at umbraco surface controller and uh, render mvc controller I have created a document type called home mobile and added a property called mobile content and created the associated templates. I suggest you have a look at the documentation for surface controller and render MVC controller. Umbraco service controls are regular ASP.NET MVC controller. They are auto rooted. We don't have to set up any custom rules to make it work. They are used for interacting with the front end of Umbraco, not the back office. Since any surface controller inherits from Umbraco Web MVC surface controller class, the class instantly supports many of the helper methods and properties. By default, front-end routing executed via Umbraco Web MVC Render MVC Control Index Action, which should work fine with most people. However, in some cases, people may want to complete control over this execution and may want to their own action to execute. Let's say uh, we have a document type called Home Mobile. We can create a custom controller in website project called Home, Home Mobile Controller and ensure that it inherits from Umbraco Web MVC Render MVC Controller. All, pa all pages, uh, which is do type document type Home Mobile, will be routed through our custom controller Home Control Home Mobile Controller. I have created the controllers models and a partial view called underscore Home Mobile. I will include them in the project, and we start implementing the code. Model view controller design pattern. The controls are responsible for building a model and passing them onto the view. The controller actions are public method on controllers. They have ability to respond to incoming HTTP requests from the web. Here we, we, uh, we have our class, model class called home model, and we add our properties. We implement render model. There are a couple of empty constructors that we need to implement going back to MVC um, we might have a country controller that builds lists of uh, most visited countries the list would be uh, the model the controller selects the view to display the model the view in MVC design pattern are very simple objects we can take them as a template they can uh, they take piece of data from the model and place them onto the proper location on the page so that's what we'll do in here with our home controller builds the model and passes to our, our, our um, template page or uh, passes to our partial view for uh, rendering.
so we got a, a public action call home and expect the render model we instantiate the our home model and pass uh, content model content and a culture is required for the constructor we get the properties for the page title body tags and pass to on the current uh, current page template for rendering So we go back to our home mobile controller and implement the service um, in order from the service controller. can use a service controller for uh, retrieving data if you have a form fields uh, render control or render MVC controller for displaying data we implement the uh, home mobile model as you can see in there we have a partial V we pass in our home mobile model to our underscore home mobile um, partial V for rendering Now we edit our uh, home C uh, CSS HTML, our home view, and we pass our model. We need to inherit from Umbraco Web MVC Umbraco View page and pass our model in this case, uh, website models home model. So our project project called website models and now we've got strong root type model has been passed now we can access the properties model dot uh, page title or body text If you go to home mobile uh, view now, uh, as you can see, we call in a render action. Render mobile four is the action, the and home is the controller. So if you go back to the home mobile controller, we can actually see our action is called Render Mobile 
on phone and the controller is on mobile HTML action invokes the sp uh, specified child action method and returns the result as an HTML string Um, HTML render action is uh, similar. It mocks a specific child action method and renders the result in line the partial way. Um, this method is more efficient if the action returns a large amount of HTML. So if you go into the um, underscore home mobile says HTML and we can pass our model there are several HTML help helpers. Uh, we will use text area for displaying the mobile content. We have a child action attribute. HTML row so that we can um, we can render the text so it's not encoded if you go to our mobile content page missing a um, render body that needs to be added to master um, mobile view and that should resolve the issue earlier we talked about child actions only attribute this attribute is important and it indicates that an action method should be called only as a child action so there is no direct access uh, you will get an error if you're trying to get a uh, action uh, directly Take the master template and if you refresh the page, I'll go back and update this column values. The um, you can create anonymous object. You can pass an anonymous object. So um, column values 80, row values 20. That should make it easier to see mobile content value retrieved from the Umbraco property. We now add some structure to solution. We create uh, class library projects to address the separation of concern design principles to make the project manageable. I suggest that you decide on the standard technologies and the frameworks uh, for the project. Think about the solution architecture before you start developing anything. Most well-structured website projects based on the design principle, the repository patterns, automatic mi migration, fluent API, ISC containers, object object mapping, unit testing, mocking, JavaScript frameworks, um, automated deployment, caching, so on and so forth. And when we build an application, we should uh, not place the database logic into the, uh, into the, into the control action. Mixing the database and the control logic makes the application more difficult to maintain over time. In the solution, uh, I've divided the, the pro uh, solution to several projects. Um, there are several class libraries, domain services, data, and separate uh, to separate it, and so that the project is uh, solution is a lot more manageable. So some uh, the there are several class libraries I have already created, and last two is uh, that we'll all, I will add is the data and data interface. Once the, uh, we at the last class libraries, um, I will uh, install the required NuGet packages. First one to install is Entity Framework, and they, we will install that first. The Auto Mapper uh, is already installed with uh, Umbraco when you installed Umbraco. Um, the other 
package the packages uh, we, we're gonna need is all the uh, NuGet packages for AutoFact for mapping object to object mapping. When we're working with the entity frame, uh, framework, code first, um, the default behavior is to <coughs> map the poker classes to tables used in a set of uh, conventions backed in, the, uh, in entity framework. But sometimes, however, we can't or we don't want to follow the, those conventions. And we need to map entities to uh, something other than the conventions dictate. There are two main ways uh, we can use the configure uh, entity framework to use uh, something other than conventions, uh, namely annotations or uh, entity frameworks fluent API. The annotations only cover the subset of the fluent API functionality, so there are mapping scenarios that cannot be achieved using annotations. I'll carry on and install the entity framework first here. The domain uh, project uh, um, where all the POCO, plain old uh, C sharp objects uh, will live. POCO objects pretty much have nothing in them but the structure of the, our data. Data project, uh, this is where the entity frame, entity frame work related objects uh, resides. Mapping, migration, this gives us a nice separation. If, if one day we need to change the tool of choice or even upgrade, there is only one layer or, or, or project to do this, is the data project. Service project, it handles the business logic at the uh, controllers. Unit of frame classes used to ex uh, exclusive in the service day and it is injected using IC containers. The next thing to be add a model model folder to our uh, domain project, and we add our first um, poker class country. Country might have several project, uh, several properties: country ID, name, description, ISO code, created on, created by, and whatever we like really. Once we create the, our country model, uh, we'll create a mapping folder in our data project and we create a class called country map that will map entity with entity type configuration and holds the data validation logic of the database table. Entity type configuration T comes from the system uh, data entity model configuration. This belongs to Entity Framework and it is responsible for um, configuration of the our models, entities in the DB, in this case country. The simple, uh, I guess we could use a key, but however we're not going to use the annotations. Uh, to specify the primary key, we use uh, Fluent API, so I remove that uh, f f key. Uh, I remove the decoration for the uh, country ID. So we added a mapping folder now, and we will add the, our country map class.
country uh, map class will inherit from the entity type configuration okay we'll pass in the country So entity type configuration country, this will help avoiding direct use of model uh, country as, as data uh, table. So we now uh, sort of uh, create our mapping, define our primary keys, properties. We have, uh, we have mapped our, all our properties. Time to create an interface called our unit of work in our data project for abstraction. We make our unit of work in, in interface implement our disposable and disposable contacts. Just um, didn't mention that once we have the Fluent API, we can configure relationships like one to many, uh, configure composite foreign keys, uh, composite foreign keys, uh, just foreign key that contains two or many columns. We could enable cascade, delete, and more. Okay, back to our unit of work. IDP set and T entity represent the collection of entities in the context. Uh, or that can be acquired from the database or a given type. DB set entity is a concrete implementation of the IDB set. Now we uh, we can start uh, building our custom DB context class. Using ORM like a uh, entity framework in our application uh, saves us uh, saves us from a lot of code that needs to be written in order to create uh, our entities and data access logic. But using the ORM uh, like entity framework sometimes lead to scattered data access logic in various places in the code. A unit of work, as its uh, name applies, does something. It provides a clean way of accessing the data and. It, at the same time maintain the testability of the application. In our solution, a unit of work, work um, does whatever we create an instance of, of, it, uh, of it and instantiates the DB context. Um, thereafter, each repository uh, service instance uses the same DB context for the database opera opera operations. So the unit of work pattern ensures that all our uh, repository service uses the same da uh, database context. DB context comes uh, from the entity framework, which allows us to interact between our database and our model. DB context is a unit of work. We create a class. Uh, we create all class called custom DB context here, and inherit from the DB context, and implement the R interface called our unit of work. We implement the required methods. On model create, on model creating a method is called uh, when the model f for a derived context has been initialized. Uh, but before the model has been locked down and used to initialize the context, the default implementation of this model does uh, nothing. We overwrite the uh, it is in the custom DB context class uh, so that the model can be further configured uh, before it's locked down. 
module uh, builder configuration at assembly get type uh, assembly uh, when using a configuration class the code for fluent api the on model on model creator method allows us to easily add configuration class defining the assembly so the configurations are added from the assembly it takes a single parameter the uh, assembly to the lookup The job of the database initializer is to create a database and the specific tables. When a DB context type is used to access the database, the first time the uh, then the uh, first time the da database initializer is called, I strongly uh, suggest that uh, um, you go to the MSDN. Uh, msdn.microsoft.com and have a look at the system.entity libraries which contains classes that provides access to a core functionality of the entity framework. We now create a, a mapper, a mapper interface and a separate the definition of the objects from the implementation and uh, auto mapper simply allow us to, uh, us to map from uh, one object to another. Uh, we now add the mapper methods definition to our interfaces, uh, our mapper service. The methods will be uh, ex uh, executed. Uh, the methods will be executing and mapping from the source to object to existing destination objects with uh, supplied mapping options. There are several methods are over uh, several, uh, several overloaded methods. Uh, please see auto mapper documentation for further implementation. So I will go and implement the required um, methods to uh, in, uh, with defining in our interface uh, without any uh, the, um, just a declaration, no definition in our interface. From the NuGet packages uh, package menu, uh, we select the default project data and we enable automatic migration. Um, once the automatic is migration is enabled, in the migration fo a folder, we get um, configuration.cs class created automatically. We go to App Start folder and add at a static register mapping method for registering our mappings. So our configuration class, there is a no seat uh, seat method is not over uh, overridden yet. Now we add, um, add my, uh, migration. Next to the next thing to do. So when we write uh, add, add migration country, this will create a migration class with specific date and uh, time in in the migration folder. This class will be used to generate the SQL for creating a country's table. <coughs> So here you go, the class being generated is prefixed with the date, primary key has been set. So to apply the changes we write update database command. If we refresh it now, we see that our migration uh, table is being created and in the, all the column values. This will create it after we run the update database command. 
also the auto migration create our countries table if you do a select statement uh, absolutely at the moment there is no rows uh, the no data in our countries table but all all our primary keys field lengths we define here country map has been uh, applied to our countries table okay there is no seat uh, so we need to seat the database uh, or our country table with some sort of data so we can insert data into our country table during the database initialization process we can provide some lookup data for the country's table the seed in the database is very helpful for providing the test data for the application I have uh, create I have created a new configuration CS class and um, all right the seed method and add, uh, add a method called add country uh, for creation uh, countries and uh, here here we can see all the, our country records um, with lots of uh, countries from the world I'll remove the all country configuration CS since it has no seed data move the, I created move the one the my, uh, from the one the migration folder that I created in, uh, into the pro migration folder so I'm moving the uh, the one with the seeds in it into the migration folder and delete the other one so it just saves us some time instead of me sitting in there typing all these uh, seed values A seed will run when we do update uh, database command uh, as you see in there um, we overwrite void seed and we pass in the custom DB context to it. If you rebuild the solution uh, to see if there are any errors. So we will uh, once the we call a save changes. Uh, which is allow us to uh, add the data into the our database uh, so it's our at, uh, at country method uh, now um, we could run a, a update database Let's clear the console and run an update database. They should now populate our country's table with the data from the seed. So seed runs every time. So you can go and drop this table and uh, run the update database. It will get populated. So it's a lookup table. Data that might not change. As I said earlier, you might have a you need a test data and put into the suite and you can test your application uh, it's very useful so the it, it run the seed so if we do a select statement hopefully we'll get some records in here Uh, here we go so 250 records has been added and created by seed um, let's uh, I think it'll be good to delete this record and test it again make sure that um, update database it populates this country is stable so we illustrate there once again
and no records. Right, we got our records now. Earlier we created our um, mapping uh, register mapping static method. Now we can call that here in our uh, Umbraco event handler. Uh, where the application has been initialized so we can uh, register our mappings we built the application again next thing there is uh, add a um, dependency injection class to our app star folder we are using Autofuck as an ISC container. Uh, I would suggest that you look at the Autofuck documentation and familiarize yourself with the, some of the um, concepts. Same as other uh, configurations uh, uh, classes, we create the dependency injection config and uh, we call this method in our uh, application initializer. In, in an Umbraco event handler class. We will configure uh, the AutoFAC and other, uh, register MVC control and API controllers. We create a geography service and register the, along with the mapping services and, and an Umbraco DB context. Okay, this is where we sort of configured the, our AutoFAC and registered all the required mappings, as, as I said earlier, um, geography service, mapping service, DB contacts. Um, so have a quick look at, and it's fairly straightforward process, and there are lots of examples of uh, mapping and registering uh, the um, objects uh, using um, Autofac. The next uh, we create our, our service called iGeography interface. This interface uh, will have um, the method signature and list I return as I list of countries. So our method is called get countries and we'll have a geography class in our service project to implement the gate pro, uh, get countries definition. We inject our unit of work interface to construct the of geography service. We do, um, when we inject, we do use a, a construction, the constructor injections. Uh, there are several things that you can property um, injections, uh, interface injections. Here we inject our high unit of work into geography service construct, uh, constructor. Then we use the get, uh, get countries, we'll plot all the countries from our um, our countries uh, data, data context. Using countries data context. Um, 
yeah, we use a simple Lombardo executions to get uh, Lombardo syntax to get the country, uh, countries out the table. Okay, let's re rebuild our projects. Uh, there was a conflict in there, Umbraco called pers uh, persistent unit of work, unit of work I was using, instead of using data interface or unit of uh, work. So we, we changed that so to make sure everything is fine. We register all our um, services in, I, in dependency injection class. Mapping service, DB contacts, custom DB contacts, our geography services. Now we're going to implement a country surface controller and implement the surface control, Umbraco surface controller. And inject our data contacts and required. Uh, service and it requires services another child action called render con uh, country form we use our geography service to retrieve the countries from the map service to list uh, to the uh, service to to i list of system web mvc selected item 
So our action result called render country form. We inject in our unit of work, our geography services, our map services, as you've seen above. Um, we haven't created our country view model yet, and we don't have a un, uh, underscore country form partial view. So uh, we will create those uh, in a minute. The, our render country form is a child actions, so there is no direct access to it. We use um, HTML action sub request to um, access our um, child action. We now create a uh, create the country view model. Having a separate model from the uh, uh, view model, good practice, instead of working on the uh, model directly, we could decorate them with annotations, regular expression, introduce additional properties. Uh, we also need to create our partial view called our uh, country of form and pass a strongly typed um, model called country view model. So country view model, we create an instance of it, we do the mapping from my uh, get countries the I list of uh, selected items We already create a view model uh, to store uh, ID. Um, ID uh, the user, uh, the ID the user will select along with the selected countries that will appear in the drop down. We we'll use HTML uh, helper called drop down listing for our view model contains two properties. So one property will hold the collection of selected items to build the drop down. One property will hold the value selected by the user. Once that done, we go to the home view and we call the child action called render country form in country surface control using an HTML action sub request. And note that this is a sub request, this is not an um, additional request to server. It is important to know that. Here we, uh, we um, the action is uh, render country form and our control is country surface. So country surface controller where well, you don't add the controller prefix on there. So we can uh, put a breakpoint in there and run the project. Um, okay, that throws up an error. Uh, let's investigate uh, what's happening. Okay, name. Ah, oh, okay. I believe that we don't have reference to yes, um, dependence injection configuration in here. So we need application initialized. We need to call our uh, dependence injections and register dependencies. And I believe they should resolve the issue. So all our services being registered. Oh, there's another error. Okay, service dot map service not assigned. Oh, okay. I can see that here map service is not in, um, inherited, uh, implemented. I I map service. So we make sure that we implement I map service. Earlier, earlier on, I suggested that 
you go and have a look at the MSDN and Microsoft.com uh, site and have a look at the system.entity libraries and uh, this is important when you're actually uh, going through uh, this video tutorial um, for instance um, uh, system data entity database class uh, System data entity is an instance of a database uh, class is obtained from the DB context object and can be used to manage actual database. The database type exposes the several properties like connection, default connection factor, and members like um, begin transactions, isolations, levels, create, delete. There are several methods and properties you should really familiarize yourself. Okay, we got another error in there. This error looks quite obvious. Uh, I think I forget in the map the, con uh, map the country to, to list items. Hopefully, once we do that, it's saying missing type map conf configuration and unsupported mapping. Yeah, I think that will be the issue. I will go and um, map, uh, configure that mapping. So, Back to system dot, uh, data dot entity library. For instance, there is a database execution XL command method um, expe expects strings and array of object as a parameter. These methods allow us to execute SQL command against the database. It accept SQL is a. Uh, it is important to parameterize a, a, a user to input inputs to um, protect uh, protect against the SQL in injections attack. Um, so this can easily be exposed in, in our unit of um, work class and it, it can be easily used throughout your project. So there are several things that can be used um, from the, the, the uh, system.entity library in your project. So these are our mappings from country ID, uh, name, so we were mapping to our value and text um, properties of the uh, I list, selected list. So once this is mapping done, and we will actually go and run, and hopefully we'll have no errors this time. So destination value, source value is country ID, country name is the destination value destination dot text. So we hit the register and uh, register mappings. And finally, is our countries are displaying? This is a simple type head example. We go and install the required packages. We currently displaying the countries in a drop down list using Surface Controller. We will change this then is a type head component with autocomplete with Angular calls. The render currently the render country form child action call from the home way and we inject in the required services into our constructors we, we move this drop down box so there's no reference to it since we will create this using type ahead I have created a folder called Angular app and added the required script. However, I haven't included in the project. I will go and do that. The scripts are included is control, service, directive and Angular app. Angular app script file contains a very simple routine. And loads the custom template. Then you land on the base URL. Use the location provider module and set the HTML5 mode to true when we configure in the routes.
HTML5 history API is standard way of manipulating the browser history using a script. It lets Angular to change the routing and the URLs of our pages without refreshing the page. Custom directive E stands for only matches element name. Custom form this is our directive. Basically, we can create our own tags using directives. And we will be accessing that tag from NGV. The HTTP get, this is the URL we use to access our geography services. Country the API controller in inherits from Umbraco the API controller. This is the API call. So countries, country API controller, then the method name get countries which is returns the I numerable country. I recommend that you use the um auto factor inject those services into the your constructor. This is our controller. We call in our custom service get get services met get countries method. It's a call back, uh, it's a, a synchronous call. If you it can return an error, we you can capture the error. Bundling and conf uh, bundling the and config files. Uh, the script bundle call uh, with virtual name bundle angle angular script and bundle custom scripts. I will include them in the project. The Angular scripts are not minify safely, so there's not minification safe. We need to enable optimization if we start to get JavaScript errors. So if there is no minification, we will get errors. So Angular needs to be minification safe. In order to make it minification safe, we need to pass an array of strings. And the last element in the array actually needs to be the function itself, and they need to ma match. So, because I scope, uh, dollar scope, I remove the dollar window, dollar HTTP, and customer service. Now this is minification is safe. If you don't do that, if when you publish it onto the to your uh, production site, if the bundling is enabled within the bundle config file, you'll get a JavaScript error. If the bundling is not enabled, uh, you wouldn't get this error. So I will. Uh, Include our scripts with by typing in the virtual parts. Angular scripts and custom scripts included in our master template. Sng so controller. Instead of a custom name, is custom controller. NGV replace the R form, which is custom template form, 
where the custom dash form is is not the custom form Mr. Reference as custom dash form. Here is our type ahead. We are asking for country dot name for countries in countries and filter it by its value. We also the responsive table keep um key value pair using ng uh, repeat the repeat the values value dot country ID and value dot name is a dictionary. So they should now allow us to retrieve our countries using an API call to Umbraco and our get countries from the using our geography services. Here is the type head if you want to have a look at uh, how to use the type head. Yeah, and there's various ways if you can use it uh, as a static arrays, custom templates, asynchronous. So it's all in the documentation. I'll go to the root of the site. This is now uses the angular routing. So we get in our countries if we can hit the API directly, we got a JSON result. So now um if we put a breakpoint in there and refresh that page as well, countries are con so we hit in the our API controller inherits from the Umbra API controller. Alright, I can see uh, uh, we need to enable our app in the body area. We call the Angular Custom App. That will initialize the Angular. We must have one Angular app within the solution. Uh, location the HTML mode requires a base. We'll need to add the base tag on our master page. We'll go and do that now. Let's see if the issue resolved now. Here is the documentation for it and you can take a look yourself. I also spotted out um, another mistake. It should be get countries rather than get country listing. And it does call get countries. So if you refresh this. The API so uh, our countries table is populated we get all the countries we got the type ahead and uh, if you type in a z we retrieve the, the data and this is a very simple type ahead um, I've used I haven't used it before I just was testing things out so hopefully it will be useful for you. One thing I need to uh, mention that you need the parsing in the N NG root and UI bootstrap in order to get the, the bootstrap functionality and the routing.